Hey, I like this thing. Chewbacca's bowcaster has been cool for literally decades, but we haven't seen just how strong it is until very recently. So, how does Chewbacca's bowcaster really work, and what makes it so strong? The Wookiee Bowcaster is a handcrafted laser crossbow, even though it doesn't shoot lasers. Laser sword. Laser sword. Yeah. Chewbacca's weapon of choice it requires the strength of a Wookiee, harnesses magnetic fields, and accelerates projectiles enveloped in plasma energy. With a string. Or something. Let's see if we can't figure out the real physics of why these weapons are strong enough to surprise even Han Solo. According to the canon, a Wookiee Bowcaster fires by using magnetic fields emitted by these orbs on the edge of the weapon. They add to the momentum of a projectile, a metal projectile, or a quarrel after it is fired by the string. Okay, this is at least half an explanation. Wookiees magnetically accelerate projectiles. Weaponized magnetic acceleration as we know it comes in two forms. The first is in something called a railgun, which we went over in my Mass Effect weapons episode. This could work for a Wookiee bowcaster, except to make a railgun crossbow, you'd want to run electricity through the same plane as the barrel to magnetically accelerate the projectile, except the string on the crossbow of the Wookiees isn't on the same plane. Unlike every crossbow ever made, ever. Well, I guess the string could be pulling back some sort of piston, like in an AK-47, but that would require the string to actually move. Hmm. If a railgun type bowcaster doesn't work, there is another option for magnetic acceleration. <laughs> Joe, dude, you gotta move. It's called a coil gun or a gauss rifle for you fallout nerds. Here's how it works. According to a fundamental law of electromagnetism called Ampere's law, when you run electricity through something like a wire, oh, suck it up, it's for science, a magnetic field is created that loops around that wire. Oh! You can concentrate these magnetic fields by twisting the wire around into loops, generally called solenoids. Then the magnetic field inside of the solenoid is all moving in one direction. In fact, it kind of looks like a big north-south magnet, doesn't it? That's how a bowcaster fires. Whatever a bowcaster quarrel is, it has to be magnetic. Because if it is, the physics tells us that when a magnetic metal approaches a coil when it's turned on, then its magnetic fields will align like this. The atomic structure of the quarrel's material will actually reorient itself such that it will create a force like bringing the ends of two north and south magnets, the opposite ends, together. This force increases the closer the quarrel gets to the coil, and it's at its highest right when the quarrel is at the middle. To turn a bowcaster into a gauss rifle then, all you need to do is line the interior of the barrel with solenoids like this, and then pull the trigger. The coral moves towards the first coil, and the electricity is turned on, creating a magnetic field, which creates a force which accelerates the coral through, and at the center, the electricity turns off. With precise timing, timing that the bowstring could actually help coordinate so that it's not, you know, doing nothing, the coral could move through each coil, getting faster and faster each time until it leaves the barrel at deadly speed. Kind of like this. No. No, dude, that's on you. This is a, you know this is a bow zone. <laughs> A Gauss rifle style bowcaster could work in the Star Wars canon of magnetic acceleration, and this design explains why a bowcaster is always scarier than a blaster. <laughs> I wouldn't want to get hit with a blaster bolt made of plasma, the stuff that lightsabers are made of, but plasma doesn't have much mass, and therefore it can't have much impact. Wookiees are strong, right? So let's make a quarrel pretty darn heavy, maybe 500 grams. Our dear friend Adam Savage calculated that the speed of a blaster bolt, and therefore a bowcaster quarrel, because everything in this galaxy looks like it's moving the same speed, I don't know why, is around 60 meters per second, or 135 miles per hour. So, if all of this kinetic energy comes to a stop within maybe two centimeters of Stormtrooper breastplate, then it is imparting 35 thousand newtons of force, or around 8,000 pounds. That would be like if you let your head be the baseball for a major league hitter. 
By comparison, a bolt of plasma would probably contain two orders of magnitude less mass, and that would result in 350 newtons instead of 35,000. I still wouldn't want to get hit by a bolt of plasma, but facing down a bowcaster, I'd let the Wookiee win. Do you get it? Do you get it? Do you get the reference? So, Chewbacca's famous bowcaster would work best as a Gauss bow, using solenoids to magnetically accelerate projectiles. Projectiles that have so much more mass than plasma bolts that they will always have more punch to them than blasters. That's why Han Solo was so impressed. Because science. Wait. Thank you so much for watching. I just wanted to quickly say this surprise lightsaber. Jeez, I should sell a t-shirt for how many of you nerds got angry that this wasn't in the last Star Wars episode. So here, here you go. You happy? And a very special thanks to Loot Crate for sponsoring today's episode of Because Science. Loot Crate is a monthly mystery crate for pop culture fans filled with exclusive items and apparel. This month's theme is Revolution and features items from Assassin's Creed, Mr. Robot, Firefly, and more. Go to lootcrate.com slash because science and enter the code because science, one word for 10% off. One thing they never show you in space battles like Star Wars has is that projectiles, in the absence of air resistance and any uh, forces like gravity if you're near a planet, if you're just in space firing around TIE fighters and X-wings, those lasers and the, the, the plasma bolts, they just go forever until they hit something. You don't think about it, but when there's a grand space battle you know, uh, above a planet, like in Star Wars, all of those missed shots are continuing off into the galaxy to eventually hit something or someone. Physics, man.